This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Hey, welcome to Canine Master Radio Show on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Chris Ampang, and today I have the pleasure of having on my show my good friend, Gail Martz. She is the founder of the Sherpa Bag. You know, that's the first officially approved soft-sided pet carrier for the travel industry. Gail was a flight attendant, and she came up with this idea. We're going to learn more about that. Gail revolutionized the pet travel. She changed the way in which we all traveled with our pets. She also persuaded all the airlines to change their policies and regulations to allow pets into the passenger cabin. They're no longer in the bottom of the the cargo area of the airplanes. Gail created in the pet industry a whole new category, and it's it's really helped enrich the lives of, uh, of people and their dogs. So I am really, really excited to have Gail on the show today. Gail is an expert when it comes to airline travel with our pets. She's going to tell us about her journey in the pet industry. She's going to give us some tips on how to acclimate your pet to the Sherpa bag, which is so important, which I know a lot of you are going to want to know. And she's going to give us some pointers on the best way to make traveling easier with your dog. So we're going to go and we're going to talk to her about her new book. It's in the bag, which is a great new book, which I just got myself and read. It's a quick, easy read. We'll talk about that. We have an exciting show today. We're going to be right back shortly after a few words from our sponsors. So stay tuned to Canine Master on Pet Life Radio. Take a bite out of your competition. Advertise your business with an ad in Pet Life Radio podcasts and radio shows. There is no other pet-related media that is as large and reaches more pet parents and pet lovers than Pet Life Radio. With over 7 million monthly listeners, Pet Life Radio podcasts are available on all major podcast platforms. And our live radio stream goes out to over 250 million subscribers on iHeartRadio, Odyssey, TuneIn, Stitcher, and other streaming apps. For more information on how you can advertise on the number one pet podcast and radio network, visit PetLifeRadio.com slash advertise today. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. Gail, so great to finally have you on the show. How are you? Hey, Chris. I'm so thrilled. I'm happy to be here with you. I have my favorite little canine with me. I mean, she's not my favorite. She's just the littlest one that you met in Nuremberg. So there we go. We're ready to rock and roll and on with the show. Well, Gail, I have been trying to get you on this show for a while, and I'm so excited to have you on. You know, Gail is the the founder of the Sherpa Bag. It's one of the true hard good brands in the pet industry. You know, we don't have really big brands in the pet industry. We got Kong, we have Flexi, but a lot of people know that Sherpa bag, Gail. You've done such a great job. That was the goal to register the name all over the world. So it's a registered trademark, the Sherpa bag. And it's all over the world. I'm so grateful when I see a Sherpa bag in another country. Yeah. You know, the thing is, Gail, I see it not only on airplanes, but I see it in restaurants. I see people carrying their dogs. in. I mean, you really change the way in which people travel or even they interact with their dogs. You know, um, so tell us now you were a flight attendant, right? I mean, so tell us a little bit about what was the inspiration behind creating the Sherpa bag. You know, it's the first soft-sided pet carrier, but how did you, I know you were a flight attendant, but how did you get it going? Well, we have to go to Sherpa the dog that came first into my life. And then having been a flight attendant and also loving luggage and bags and things like that. And I wanted to be able to take Sherpa the dog with me. She was a small dog and a Lhasa Apso, and I wanted to be able to take her with me. I had a tote bag, but the tote bag didn't have ventilation. It didn't have all the proper things that you need for the safety, the comfort, and everything that the pet needs to be able to 
be comfortable, safe. And of course, I always wanted it to be stylish. And so the Sherpa bag came about. I had to name it after Sherpa the dog. Because of course. She, of <laughs> course. She was the queen of the empire. She was my, I'm a photographer, so she was my best model. And the picture is worth a thousand words. So I designed a bag, I created a bag, and and then I laid a foundation, a very strong foundation. And that was to first get the airlines to change a policy regarding pets in the passenger cabin. So that was your biggest challenge, right, Gail? I mean, getting the airlines to yeah. to be able to do it. And what mag Sky Mall magazine? That's exactly right. That was uh, one of the magazines I had to get into because I had that captive audience. There they were on an airplane. They used to have magazines in the seats <laughs> and catalogs, and there you were, a captive audience on the seat and you look through the sky mall and there's a dog in a soft-sided carrier so that was like one of my first places to get the sherpa bag into you're right that's good so then american airlines was your first real break right i mean they were the first ones and then the other airlines started to follow suit kind of thing well, nobody follows suit. You had to work tediously with each uh, one. With American Airlines, I began working with them and I had to educate, inform people, show people that this is the comfortable, safe, safe, comfortable alternative to the hard plastic carrier. So I was, you know, again, as you said, I created a category, the soft sided pet carrier. Yeah. Well, it's amazing. And then Delta was your last holdout. I think I read that in your book. So it was Delta that you had to really try to get at the end there. Oh, yes. It took four years. Delta was the last one. Being a photographer, I would do these cards and I would have cards of, you know, Sherpa and a cat showing you it's not just about dogs, it's dogs and cats. And how many households have dogs and cats? It's huge. And so Delta was the last one. And then I flew to Atlanta, worked with the whole team. Sherpa was the dog in the center of the table in her her Sherpa bag during this three and a half hour meeting. And she was a big success. She gets up at the end. She looks at everybody and then walks out, walks back in and lays down. And I said, and that is Sherpa. I was- love that. I love that. You know, you really live your dream. You do a lot of travel. You live in Paris part of the time. You live in California and around the world. And you and I get to see each other often, which is some of my most fun we have together. But I do want to ask you, I want to get into the stresses of traveling because traveling with your dog is a very stressful, very stressful experience sometimes. I hear people all the time, how do I do it? So you know what I'd like to do, Gail, is I'd like to go into how we make things easier for you and your pet to get on the plane. And so I want to get into that in a little bit. But first, we're going to get right back to you guys shortly after we hear some words from our sponsors. Back right at you. Sit. Stay. We'll be right back. Right after we kibble a little with our sponsors. Molly, here's your dinner. (coughs) Zeus, that's not your food. Don't let that happen to your precious cat. Elevate your cat's eating experience with the Cat Tree Tray. The Cat Tree Tray keeps your cat's food off the floor and conveniently located on the cat tree. It's the perfect way to eat. It's a beautiful wrought iron tray that easily attaches to your cat tree and keeps dogs and other critters out of your cat's dish. A must for multi-pet households. There's a 6-inch tray for large bowls and a 4-inch tray for smaller bowls. Purchase your Cat Tree Tray today. Go right now to CatTreeTray.com. That's CatTreeTray.com. C-A-T-T-R-E-E-T-R-A-Y.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets. On Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. Dot com. <laughs> All right. Hi, Gail. So we're back. So Gail, as I said, was a world traveler. And you still use your Sherpa bag, don't you? 
constantly. I just came back from Paris on Saturday with Coco. Oh, and, great. Yeah, she was in her bag. And then my car too, who will be 16 next month, sleeps in her Sherpa bag. They love to be in their Sherpa bag. They know that they're safe in their bag. And it's a home within a home. So I don't really, I'd like to just stay away from what the smallest amount of the public does is get on an airplane. Then the next one is in the car, safety in the car. But everybody has a home. And what you see goes on in the news. Here's a fire there. Here is this happening here. And so you really want to be able to prepare for anything that can happen. And then that bag is their portable pet den that they can travel in. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we hear the horror stories of people that in the past, whether you're traveling with your dog or, or you know, when you put them in the cargo, we used to put them in the, what we call the very kennels in the cargo space. And there's these horror stories that I have heard. I mean, I one time shipped a dog, a puppy to California that I had bred and the dog got lost, you know, so I really want to talk about some of that. But I want to ask you, so the Sherpa bag is for certain size dogs, right? So unfortunately, we can't bring on the plane our large golden retrievers. So those dogs still need to go in the cargo space down below. Right. And so so really, the Sherpa bag is really pointed towards those smaller dogs, um, what, exactly. under, under 15 pounds kind of thing, Gail? Well, it really is because when you look at the airline, all of the regulations, the rules, and you really want to be totally prepared for travel. And so each airline has their own policy regarding pets in the passenger cabin. And the pet must remain in the bag, the Sherpa bag, for the duration of the flight. So, you know, what? So let's just say coming back from Paris, that Coco does not come out of the bag and walk around the plane or do other things like that. She's in the bag underneath the seat and she's comfortable because it's that den environment that they love. So, yeah. So let's talk about that. How do we acclimate? How would you recommend that our listeners acclimate their dog to the bag before the trip? Because you really need to plan ahead well before you get on that flight. Oh, absolutely. You want to have the bag open on the floor in their favorite place, or it could be on your bed, you know, just keep moving it around. So they see that this is a wonderful place for them to be. And then the bag would have their toys. They love a chewy or something inside the bag. And then it's just in a place that they can go in and out of. So it's like, I remember going over to someone's apartment who had a Sherpa bag, who was up in the closet. I said, no, you can't do that because the pet needs to be familiar, associated with the pleasant experience, keep it on the floor so they can go in and out, keep it in a favorite place. And it's a den for them. They love that. Yeah. And they get to see also that it's a place to go places. So you start carrying your dog around in the bag. I see you at the trade shows, Gail. You always have Coco in the bag with you and people go, oh my God, I can't believe there's a dog in there. So it really does need to become part of their life, right? It's a lifestyle. So it's a lifestyle. They know that like she sees me getting dressed or doing whatever she, and I'll tell her before, you know, I think that speaking to your pets is what we always do. If you don't speak to them, how are they going to know? And, you know, they will understand and they will see the body movements. They will see what's happening happening. Suitcases come out, you know, they see what's going on and they know what's happening. And so they, all of the dogs will know that. And we have to include those, but this is doggone smart, but we're doggone smart to include cats too. (laughs) That's right. So let's talk about the size. What is the maximum size that can go into the Sherpa bag size dog? I know that the dog needs to be able to stand up and comfortably turn around because that bag goes underneath the seat in front of you. Is that right? 
Yeah, absolutely. But underneath the seat in front of you, it just became very small because of all the electronics that were put into the seats. So it's like everything changed with that. So you want to be able to make sure on the flight that you're taking, you must call the airlines in advance. Like if you have, I work with American Express Centurion. They know all about me. It's 34 years. But you must have, if you're making a reservation, make your reservation, but make sure you speak with the airlines and you find out what type of equipment you're on as well and where the pet can be. Got it. So it is important to really plan ahead from your trip. You must really plan ahead. You have to be totally prepared with everything. Let's just say, let's talk about going overseas because there is an increase in people going overseas. So it takes the time to get the proper United States Department of Agriculture stamp. You need the veterinarian, all of those things done within 10 days. And then look at the mail if you want to rely on the mail. And I think everything's a little up in the air, as they say. Yeah. So you want to allow exactly the time that you have, say 10 days, so get it out to them prior. That's overseas. Domestically, that's a trip to the veterinarian. The veterinarian can give you the health certificate, the inoculation certificate, and, and then it must be said that the dog is healthy. It has the rabies shot. It has all of the things that they need in order to be able to be on a plane or in a car. Forget about the plane. Most people are traveling by car, so it's in a car. Sure. And you actually strap the Sherpa bag with the seatbelt. It has a, a place to do that right into the car, right? Yes. I worked with the automotive industry in Detroit for pet occupant safety. And the thing is, is when I'm driving and I see a dog hanging its head out the window, you know, just taking in that air and everything, that's the worst thing that people could do because we have all that debris flying through the air that can go right into their eyes. So the safety comes into a small dog cat in its bag. A large dog must be using one of those harnesses, the things that they make that are all out in the marketplace. Yeah. I mean, you really do. If you get into a car accident with a small dog, that dog is going to launch like a missile out of your car. Uh, it, even it could go through the windshield. They're a projectile. And yeah. that projectile can come from, you know, it, and it's like it was all done. You know, they did all these crash testings and everything when I was working in Detroit on pet occupant safety. So you really must be aware that that is not safe to do with your pet in the car. And then how distracting there you are driving, you know, they're jumping from the back. I ask people this and, you know, they're jumping from the back to the front. Oh, they just want to be by you. Oh, they're going to go down by the brakes. You know, it's not safe. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's, it's true. So let's go back to when I'm going to take my dog on a plane. I want to talk about, I need to get bring some extra towels and maybe an absorbent liner. Doesn't the Sherpa bag have an absorbent liner on the bottom? Yes, it does. But I always put in extra things to make them very comfortable in that bag. Just, you know, like I have a couple of different layers and different things so that they can kind of dig into their cave because you know how they like to dig around into their cave. So I always have the extra things in there because it can get very cold on an airplane. And if you're on, let's say you have a check in, you know, that's three hours before you had to get to the airport, that's two hours. Then you have the three hours ahead for the flight. Then you had an 11, 12 hour flight. You have a very long time that that dog is going to have to be inside a bag. Yeah. So that means you probably shouldn't feed your dog right before the flight, right? And you want to make sure that you get your dog walked right before is, you know, so he has a potty break before he gets into the terminal. Well, yes. And the dog no, not to eat. I mean, once you've done this enough, those dogs, when they see the bag, they know it, it's like if you knew you couldn't go to the bathroom for 15 hours, I don't think you'd be eating at the buffet, <laughs> you know, right. or drinking all of the things. 
And the dogs know that as well. So you want to really familiarize them. And, you know, I said, we're going on it. This is a very long trip. It's a very long trip today. You know, I was telling Coco that from Paris, a very long trip. Yeah, yeah. And the other thing is you want to make sure that your dog has its rabies vaccine tag and its identification tag on a collar or on a harness on the dog. I have heard horror stories where dogs have gotten loose out of the bags and running around the airport and didn't have their, their dog tags on, right? Right. In the cargo area, different things like that have happened. So that is imperative that they must have that. And, you know, when we talk about the microchips that are very important for the dogs to get, it's so important for them to have them because they can scan and find, you know, where that dog is from. It's very important. So do we have certain rights when we're flying with our dogs? Is there any legal rights that you have, or is it just sort of made up by the airline itself? The airline has a policy. So it, nothing is governed by the United States Department of Agriculture or the Federal Aviation Administration. It's regarding airline policy. So the airline policy keeps changing from the beginning of the time. When I first started the company and I wrote, Sherpa would write travel tales from her perspective, T-A-I-L-S, and I would write travel tips. And Sherpa's talking from her perspective, you know, the big bulky bags get on for free and I had to pay $45. That was, <laughs> you know, now it could be $200 or whatever it is. So your rights are, you cannot disturb anyone else on the plane because there are people that do not like pets. We can't imagine that, but it's really true. So, you know, I asked the woman next to me, I just wanted to make you aware I have a small dog. Are you okay with that? She says, as long as it doesn't come out of the bag. I said, the dog does not come out of the bag for the duration of the flight at all. So you see a lot of people open up the bag when they get it, and it really kind of spoils it for the rest of us, because a lot of times, you know, we want to keep this going. And, it, and it's really a responsibility of all of us that travel with our dogs to follow the rules, right? Oh, you have to. And then when I see dogs walking around the terminal, you cannot do that because there are people that are allergic to pets as well, you know, aside from being allergic, as they say, to peanuts. But what it is, is you can't be having a dog walking around during the terminal before the boarding, all of the things they need to have everything done before. And if you're getting on a plane, you know that, but your dog doesn't until you tell them and you do it properly. So one more thing, what kind of sort of, you know, provisions do you bring? You know, do you bring a toy for your dog? Do you bring a chew toy or what, what, what else? Yes, I have those chewies that, that they like. And, you know, because I, I have the extra layers in the bag, I will also have a toy inside the bag, but they like the chewy. And really all they want to do is sleep because it's a quiet, you know, they're underneath. Well, if they can fit underneath the seat in front of you, right? Because yeah. now it's dimensions have even shrunk further. So you have to be very careful to always adhere to what the aircraft is that you're flying with. And the airlines must tell you that in advance. So if you're speaking with a travel agent, they have to know to be able to get that information. When you make a reservation for yourself, you make one for your pet at the same time. And then you can find out Okay, because there's only two pets allowed in this class. There's only this many pets allowed in that class. And they should be separated, not in the same row uh. and all of that. So you really want to be aware of animals that are traveling on, not that many are traveling on the same plane and that you're seated away from the other animal. Right. So plan well in advance is probably your advice. Oh, definitely. You really have to plan in advance for everything that you're doing, and especially an international trip. But it doesn't even, let's just talk, that's a plane. That's the smallest amount. Let's talk about a car. That's another, really, you're taking the pet in a car. So then you've got to be very careful for everything that you're doing and know what, is it okay to bring a dog into this state? Is it okay to do this? Can you do that? 
But really what's so important is the place that you are going, make sure that you have a veterinarian, a reputable veterinarian that you can go to in that destination. Ah, that's great advice. That's so important, Chris. That it was in Germany. I had Kimba, the other dog that you had met, and yep. she got very, very sick. And so the hospital, the urgent care, the different things. So you have to know all of these things when you're traveling. You know, you have to have the shot record. You need to have all of that information about the dog with you. Yeah, yeah. Wow, wow, Gail. I mean, I will tell you what great advice because. I can't tell you as a canine behaviorist how often I get people asking me, I want to fly with my dog. How do I do it? What are the regulations? So I really appreciate you giving us all this advice because it's so valuable. And you created the category. Who else wants to ask you? (laughs) Yeah, that's right. That, That is exactly right. I'm very grateful. I'm uh, the, one of your questions was, how do I feel when I see a Sherpa bag? I'm very proud. I really oh, am. I bet. Yeah. And when it's done properly, you know, not with the pet hanging out of the bag or walking around or doing anything because I had written the travel tales and travel tips to tell them this is what you do when traveling. Now, that was way back 34 years ago when it all began online. People can go online on all of the different search engines, ask any question that you would want. How many dogs are are there in the world? When did the first dog begin? Did you know it was 20 to 40,000 years ago? Well, it began as wolves, but at any yes. rate, yes. so, you know, and then the domestic, you just learn a lot. I find it very interesting. Yeah, I think online is great. You know, I want to ask you, you, you just completed your book. It's called It's in the Bag and How to Turn Your Passion into a Business. And the book, it's, uh, it's part memoir, and, and it is, it's actually part a business book, too. I mean, I found it so interesting. You gave it to me when you and I were flying back from, I think we were in Germany going to Paris, and then I continued to read the book all the way home to back to New York City. What a great book. I just want to talk about that a little bit. I mean, you really, really, is, it's, it's a fabulous book. And if you're interested in the pet industry or if you're a woman in business, the, the amazing stories in that book have just been, were just great. Well, Chris, you know, the thing is, it's like, it could be a woman, it could be a boy, it could be a man, it can be whatever, because everyone, you know, if you love a pet, it's starting a business. So the idea was to show people, like, it's a double entendre, you think it's in the bag, like you think this deal is a done deal, didn't you think that deal was a done? Oh, you think this flight is really, you think it's in the bag? Well, that's one. And then it's in the bag is the story of Sherpa and, you know, what it took and and how things evolved through the period of doing something when you don't even know how you're going to do it. And it's like, now you have so many opportunities to learn in different ways. And I thought I would share that with men, women, boys, girls, so they can learn that it's not in the bag all the time. Well, you had two people try to steal your business and they actually did steal your business away from you for a moment, right? I mean, I'll let people read it in the book, but that was just so interesting to hear that story and how you got your business back. Well, you're going to have so many as what did the attorney, no one ever copied a bad idea. So I have patent and trademark attorneys. Everything I do was always registered, copyright, you know, whatever I had to do, I would do. So, you know, and and my patent and trademark attorney said no one ever copied a bad idea, which is really true. So just figure it out. They you will be copied and you must prepare yourself for different things. And the way that I could always do that was have another idea. But the Sherpa bag, it's like I get to see these reports globally that it is the number one pet carrier in the world. And Sherpa is a brand. I love it. Well, how do people find your book? Where can they buy it? Oh, Amazon. So you go online and you just put It's in the Bag by Gail Martz. And then you can buy the book. And there's so many different places. It's on Kindle. It's on different places. But Amazon has everything. So you do it the search bar. It's in the Bag by Gail Martz. Wonderful. Well, Gail, thank you so much for being on the show today. It was great to have you and to have such a, an amazing person who really has changed how we live with our pets. And we're so thankful to have you on the show. 
as I am as well, Chris. Thank you so much. It was really Thank great. You. All right. Well, that's it for today. I hope you found our show to be interesting. I'd love to know your comments and have you join our conversation. You can always email me at chris at caninemaster.com. Be sure to visit our website at caninemaster.com. That's C-A-N-I-N-E master.com. Click on Ask the Canine Master and I'll leave your questions for me and, and I'll do my best to get right back to you. I may even have you call into the show with your questions. Send me your videos, your photos, so I can see what's going on and, and what your dog is doing, and I'll help you fix your problem. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time on Canine Master on Pet Life Radio, where I will continue to help you master the relationship with your dog. Bye for now. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.